Hello, friends. My name is Dave Miller. And I'm Niles Spain, And we're your fuck buddies. We are a dating and sex advice program where we take your sticky, sexy situations and turn them into sexy, sticky situations. Simply put, we find questions either online or from our wonderful listeners, and we answer them right here, right now, in your ears, every Monday, sometimes on stage. But we'll get to that in a second. Why did you say program? Did I say program? You said program, not podcast. Program. It's We've done this hundreds of times. Hundreds of times, Mr. Dane. And it's time to elevate the program. We're not a podcast anymore. We're a multi-award winning sex and dating advice show. It's not a podcast. I thought we agreed on experience. I think experience has to be the last part. Experience. Oh, so we're not quite there. We're not there yet. Program is is we're bridging the gap between the two. I thought we were there. Our listeners keep telling me we're there, but that's fine. (laughs) You'd be like, what an experience it is to listen to you guys. guys. Every time you say it's a podcast, like, look, I love everything else you do so much so that it pisses me off when you say podcast because it is an experience. It is an experience. And you know what? This week, we're going to be experiencing starting a sex-based saving scheme. Always alone because of your high standards. If you have a work wife or work husband, you're a garbage piece of shit. (laughs) Wanting to say daddy. And maybe even girlfriend won't let me order drinks at a coffee shop. <laughs> I, I mean, let's just get into it. I guess what we should do is inform mm-hmm. people before we get into this. If you do want an experience, if you are one of those people who is like, hey, the show is an experience. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend that you go to our actual in-person live show experience mm-hmm. because that is a full tactile experience. There's and it's never going to be more tactile. Than February 8th, when it's instead true. of two people on the stage, there are going to be four. That's one four. for each finger I'm holding up at our new video segment of our podcast, which is <laughs> kind of the whole thing. Maddie and Liv, you might know them as 30 going on 13. They are wonderful. Outstanding comedy in Canadian Podcast Awards. Good friends of ours. Lawfully married pod wives. They're going to be on stage with us, creating some carnage, I can only imagine. It's going to be absolutely unhinged. Like... Every show that we've seen with the two of them, unhinged. Yeah. Our show's a little more structured, but there is definitely some screws on the hinges. The four of us on stage together, this four Canadian podcast award winning Mm -hmm. podcasters doing Mm -hmm. a show together. We have some fun things. It's our anniversary show. It'll mark one year of doing the show. And so we're doing a little celebration. There will be a an extra means of purchasing a ticket for only five dollars more a vip tier a vip tier Mm. only five dollars more and you will get a a welcome class of rose bubbly to celebrate with us fuck yeah so hopefully we will see you there but let's get into the questions also tickets will probably sell out really quickly so make of that information what you will (laughs) okay this is my 21-year-old female boyfriend, 22-year-old male, said he would put $5 aside every time we had sex, so the amount of money I get from him will depend on me. I, 21-year-old female, was told by my boyfriend he would put a certain amount of our country's currency, the equivalent of 5 US dollars, aside every time we had sex, so the amount of money I will get from him will depend on me. We've been together for just over a year now. I was taken aback by this, but I thought he was joking because I had told him I could charge him $30 as a joke for saying that a female friend of his is prettier than me for the second time this year. Honestly, I meant it as a joke at first, but the more I thought about it, the more uncomfortable I became. The more uncomfortable I became, the more I actually looked back at the things he did slash said that I brushed off. One thing in particular that stood out was when he forgot my birthday, which was in May. In his defense, it was his brother's and close friend's birthday on the same day, and he was at both celebrations. True, I know them, but we are not close. I also joked about charging him $30 for that one, too. But the whole putting aside money thing came up when I joked about charging him for the pretty comments he made. He's not budging, and I can't tell if this is a joke or not. I feel confused, as this is my second serious relationship. How do I confront slash talk to him about this one? So he said his response to 
I got a little lost in the sauce on this one. His response to, hey, you called my friend pretty, so I'm going to charge you $30, was, hey, every time we have sex, I'm going to put $5 away for you? Yeah. Okay. I mean... It, it is funny, because it seems to me, like, at the start of this conversation, it's a very shitty, like... You start reading the post, and you're like, oh, this guy's a scumbag. He's like, yeah, if you want money, you gotta fuck me. But then she delves into her history of regularly being like, you owe me $30 for that. You owe me $30 for that. You were at your friend's birthday instead of mine? $30. Said she was pretty? $30. So it's like, I can't help but feel it is not, in fact, a thing he has come up with, and more maybe a, like, retaliatory, if you're gonna keep charging me for shit, like, I'm gonna be toxic right back. Yeah, it definitely seems like, and like, $5 is pretty low, right? So I also feel like if you wanted $30, it would be very easy to get it very quickly from this man, right? But she doesn't want to have to fuck him for it. She wants him to pay for missing birthdays and saying people are pretty. You know, normal relationship stuff. <laughs> just Why $30, dude? I, I can only assume, because they did mention our country's currency at the start, so it must be like an even like hundo or something. Right, okay, she's converting yes. a 30 as well. Or she just knows it's like a sub, a coke, and like a cake. Like, the three of them, she can go get like a nice foot-long can of coke and a little like fucking cheesecake for later. It's I a perfect amount. Don't understand anything that's happening in this question. And like, <laughs> you, the like, question asker, it's tough because you're the problem, I feel like, or at least <laughs> you're a big part, part of, of the problem. Yeah. Stop. Like, why are you, if you're uncomfortable with things that's happening, or if you mm-hmm. feel hurt that he forgot your birthday, those are all valid, right? Like, if you're like, hey, it kind of makes me feel weird that you keep calling my friend pretty, or hey, I feel a little sad that you forgot my birthday. And it's yeah. not even like, I think it's easier to remember someone's birthday if it's on the same day as two other people's birthday. You know what I mean? Because like, it is. I will say they've only been going out for like a year, right? Two years, I think she said. Or this the, the uh, second year? Yeah, together for just over a year now. So it's like, if her birthday was like six months ago, or eight months ago even, it's like, they were pretty new. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, of course he's going to be with his like best friend and brother, right? Yeah. So, like, those are all valid things. You're allowed to feel upset or uncomfortable based on those metrics. Like, I totally get being like, eh, I don't feel yes. great. You keep being like, eh, what a hot friend you have. Again, I don't know how blatant he was about it. Like, it could have well, just been an offhand account based on he, what I'm gathering of this person. What she said was he said she was prettier than her. Mm, right. Which okay. is kind of shit. But I'm so worried based on, like, the immaturity and lack of everything good in this that she was like is she pretty oh yeah yeah she's uh, is she prettier than me like you know what i mean if it was one of those where like mm. it, it was kind of like you got poked with a spear back into a corner and eventually you had to be like fine yeah she's prettier than you and then she's like ah 30 dollars <laughs> pay up so that's where i'm going to it, like my next step is like you're allowed to feel those ways but if the way that you want to compensate yourself that. for those feelings is to set an arbitrary dollar value as to how much your feelings have been hurt and then expect them to pay a monetary sort of like consolation fee to upsetting you, you grossly misunderstand how human relationships work. What if they should work like that, though? What if that the answer? It's like, oh, fuck, I didn't, like, I went to the shops, I said I'd get you a coffee, and I just got my cell phone, and you're like, seven dollars. It's give me put it in the hurt pocket. It's not you have one dedicated pocket that they took the money into for apparently. It's not a bad idea in terms of like, I think it would work. I think if every time I forgot to do something or every time, you know, if I waited too long to respond to a text, I had to pay money. Oh, I would be so rich. It would be very easy. Now, the flip side, it would be very easy to weaponize because I know when you work yes. and I would just fucking <laughs> I would just hit you. So like, Obviously not the way to do it. It's just, it's so fucking wild to me that you brought up this notion of being paid for acts within this relationship. Mm -hmm. Yours were punitive. His seems to be a reward, which is also strange to me to be like. But it's almost like, it's almost opposite where it's like, you have to like, fuck me to earn your money. Like, it's not good. It's not like, here's a reward. We had sex. Here's $5, you know? 
it almost the, seems that, that toxic like oh if you don't fuck me you don't like i don't know it's it's but, not but there's no expectation to pay your partner for sex or to pay your partner at all but right? he's it's, introducing it but that's what i'm saying it's like it's all a bonus i don't hey, you could don't, look at it that way if one day my partner was like oh new thing on top of having sex you're gonna just get money now i'd be like yes. whoa but i think this is more like shitty <laughs> like you have to fuck me to earn money but again <laughs> like if this is the like if she's the could possibly like she can make her own money she's not solely dependent on this man for income you don't know i guess but <laughs> from what i gather if we're looking at this like this is great i don't think it's meant to be a good thing i think I, it's I, meant to be a shitty toxic thing I think in his mind, he's like, you're being shitty. So here's the my version of being shitty right back. You know, you're right. And I agree with you. And it's it's a bad thing to do. It's toxic. But what I'm saying is she's being like, pay me. You did a bad job. Pay me. She's being like, hey, we had sex. Here's money. Right. Like, I think it's more like, hey, fuck me to get this money. (laughs) Like, like, look. It's I such a low dollar about that it's not worth it. It's not like you convert it. You don't know where they're converting it from. Maybe it's big there. I guess. All I will say is you said it earlier. This isn't the way to do it. If you want to talk about being upset that your birthday has been ignored, you don't just fucking write an invoice. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like you go and you say, hey, this sucks. And maybe he'll be like, hey, we've only dated a few months. I'm sorry, but it's my brother. Yeah. And then you have a chat you know what i mean i feel like he is just retaliating at this point and that's what this current issue is and i think it's weird to not have really seemed to have picked up on that in the question it's like you're almost there but you're unwilling to be like yes my ridiculous ongoing joke that's not a joke weird thing that i do has spurred this and it's like okay maybe you need a healthier way of dealing with things so it's obviously pissed him off was this the way to do to deal with that? Also, no. But yeah, like, obviously, the answer is talk to your partner and be like, hey, I'm sorry that every time you've upset me, I have charged you money for it. And specifically $30. But I do also have to say, like, it kind of feels weird that you're now offering me money for sex, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like, have that conversation, how you feel and be open and honest about it. But for me, I feel like it just might be better for the world, your country's economy, if you guys just stop dating each other and start putting the money into, I don't know, small businesses instead of (laughs) just... He walks into a local coffee shop and he's like, look, if you fuck me, you could do really well. Yeah, it's, I just, I feel like you gotta have the conversation or move on. But I feel like, it doesn't have their ages. She's 21, he's 22. Okay, you're very young. So I guess that makes Yet a little bit too sense. old for this. <laughs> too old for this, for sure. Do you have a solution? Because mine is okay. just run away from each other. I think genuinely, it's like you need to stop hiding behind this joke. That's clearly not a joke in that, like, you're upset, but you're pretending you're not upset. And you're like, ha, pay me $30. But like, you know, stop hiding behind that express when you're upset and let it like be dealt with. Mm-hmm. And also clearly you do this so much that's annoying him and now this is his way of dealing with that which again not great but you both need to learn to communicate that's it don't be like i'm not annoyed but really i am i'm not annoyed pay me 30 dollars. like fuck off talk and if you're gonna run this if you're gonna retaliate tell her that she has to pay you five dollars to have sex don't give them money it makes no sense yeah it doesn't it doesn't work this is from pomeranian 111 if you're a man with high standards You'll just never date anyone? I've heard this sentiment before. I've started to realize the amount of work it would take isn't enough to justify relationships or sex at all. I'm going to pair this with another question. Is that it? That was it. What does it mean? If you have a high standards, are you just doomed to be alone forever? Because it's... As a man. As a man. Okay. So I'm going to pair this in because I think it's got a little more meat on the bone to chew on. This is from Therapy 8600. I miss my routine and I'd rather be lonely. I started going on dates and holy shit, it's so draining. I have to get ready for dinner and listen to them talk for hours. On top of it, paying for the dinner. Sex is okay, but it's not worth breaking my routine. Also, most of the women I went on dates have baggage and I don't have the mental capacity. I don't feel like texting anymore, staying up on the phone anymore, getting gifts. 
I was lonely. That's why I wanted to go on dates. But this is exhausting. I miss my routine of working, coming home with my cat, studying, chilling. Maybe it's because I haven't found the right one. But damn, I don't want to go through the process of finding her. Sad out there. I See, I never understand questions like this because I really enjoy dating. Yes, I think you and I have very similar like outlooks on the process of dating in the mm-hmm. sense of being like, it's fun for us. Yeah. It's Again, fun like, to meet someone it, new. Yeah, is every second a joy? No. And I think a few things, because there's different things between the two of them. I would love to fucking know what this high standards man means by his high standards, because it could be stupid shit. Like, his high standards could be like a woman who cooks and cleans, you know what I mean? And it's not your high standards, you're just a dick. Or you have unrealistic standards, which is not the same as high. With the guy who's complaining about paying for dinner, talk about this all the time. Don't go for dinner on dates. That's an easy fix. We talk about it. But, like, if you have a routine and you're happy, you don't have to date either. You know, that's another thing. It's like, if you're not feeling it, don't do it, right? If it's an emotional taxing drain on you, like, don't do it. If the thought of listening to someone else talk is like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to go out later and listen to somebody talk. It's like, if that's not exciting and fun for you, don't do it. And also maybe think about why that isn't exciting and fun for you. Because, like, if you don't give a fuck about the people you're seeing, you're never going to have fun. That's kind of it, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with, and you're not broken or fucked up or whatever, if you're currently just vibing, being like, I like going to work, and then coming home, playing video games, and petting my cat, and then... Hell yeah, it sounds wonderful. But, like, I did that for a very long time, I, and I was very content doing that for a very long time, because it was, like, I wasn't really in the market to really date. There's also, like, a lot of people look at dating as, like, go on app. Meet woman, talk to woman, go on date, works, not works, and then mm-hmm. like either continue to see woman and then get in relationship because I've gone on X Time amount of dates. Passed, yeah. Right? Instead of like a more sort of nebulous, sort of like amorphic free flow thing mm-hmm. of being like, I'm going to go on the apps and if I match with someone and I vibe with them, then I'll go on a date with them. I'm going to go I on something. I don't. Yeah. I'm going to go on something low commitment. I'm going to go on something low energy. Even if it's a coffee date, go for cake, yeah. have a drink. Things that like, like, don't require a huge financial investment or a time yeah. investment. And you can yeah. bounce whenever you want, right? Like mm-hmm. if you go for one drink and you're not vibing, just be like, well, I got a really early day the next morning. Yeah. Like yeah. have your ripcord ready. And, like if you're not enjoying a date, that is fine. If you don't enjoy any dates, something's wrong. Either you're meeting the wrong people, you're an asshole. You know what I mean? Like if you just don't like women, you probably shouldn't be dating women. You know what I mean? So I just like, uh, and also see it as like, you're meeting someone new. That's like a little adventure. You're going to be out. It could be the coolest fucking person. You could have a really fun day. Or again, it could be bad. And in that case, don't overstay. Just leave. Be polite. Be cool. The alternative. And I found this was a thing that happened a lot. Take yourself out. During my little stint on online dating again, was that a lot of people were going on dates because like they were playing the numbers game and they weren't that interested. Mm. Right. So it's like you go in and it's just like, you can immediately feel the vibe of being like, Oh, you're not into this as much as I would want you to be. And that was like an immediate turnoff for me. I love that. It's like, why are you here? Yeah. And like, that was my thing. It's it's already like, I don't know. Like maybe it's just like you walk in there like, Oh no, he's so ugly. (laughs) But like, again, my photos were, pretty indicative of who I am. Honestly, probably worse than I look in real life, depending on the, the era. Yeah. So like, and, but like, cause then there were other times where like I would go on dates and it would be like right off the bat, you know, chemistry sparks, great fun. Mm-hmm. It, it was no problem. So I found that like, and I've talked to people. There's a lot of my regulars who are single and how I've turned on to the show. Hello, everyone that listens. But like people have talked about dating problems, dating issues and stuff like that, where they'll be like, oh, I have to go meet this guy. I'm like, well, that's a terrible like attitude to to start a date. If you're rolling your eyes and dreading going on a date, just don't go on the date. I will say, I think we talked about this a while ago about the like the TikTok person who saw their date was like, oh, I have to go on a date later. Mm -hmm. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? There are times where like I'm going to a live show and I'm like, oh, like 
I wish we didn't have to do this today. And it's not that I don't love the live shows and it's not whatever. It's just that day I am tired. But I know when I get there, I'm going to have fun and I'm going to vibe and it'll be fucking high energy and shit. I'm just that day is a day I want to be cozy at home. And I've felt that way about dates where I don't feel about the person. I just feel it about like, I have to leave my house, right? And I get that. But again, it's like, if you bring that energy to the person, don't go. If you're not able to step outside of that and genuinely give it a good shot, do yourself a favor and stay home. For me, it's like, once I leave the house, that's it. Like, I'm doing it on purpose, right? And I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think if you're getting into a groove of going on these dates, that you're not vibing with, that you're not, then maybe you do need to sort of like raise your standards, right? Like don't go on a date or match mm -hmm. with people unless it's a very exciting prospect. Like don't yeah. say if yes to women. Yes. Yeah. Don't just be like, oh, someone showed interest. Yes. And I feel like a lot of people are doing that, especially in like, once you get into the thirties dating, like the dating game changes entirely. And that was something I learned, you know, recently of being like, oh, Everyone gets fucking weird in their 30s about dating. In your 20s? Again, like, I don't know if it's like this in your 20s now, you know, just because of the way that society has moved. Mm. But like in the 20s, it was just sort of like, it was a lot more fun. It was a lot more sort of like carefree. But like now everyone's kind of like, they've gone through some shit. They've seen some shit. They're smarter. They're more like, like they're a little more like solid and like who they are. But then there's also like, everyone's got like this ticking time bomb being like, mm, yeah. I'm, I'm X age and I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And you're just like, can you just fucking chill? Because you will never, I've mentioned it before where, you know, I've vibe with people and they hit you with the like, Oh, well I'm looking for something very serious and mm. you know, I'm not going to wait around forever for it. And it's just like, we've gone on three dates. Date. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? Like, sorry, but I'm not going to, like become exclusive with you after knowing you for yeah, like no three weeks. You. No. Yeah. And like the worst thing about that is you're going to drive away chill people and you're only going to attract people who are like of a similar desperation. And that's yes. not like, you know, you don't want like you'll have kids one day. It's like, oh, mom and dad, how'd you meet? It's like, well, we were both really desperate. It's like, cool. Yeah. Well, okay. I gave him an ultimatum after the third time I saw him. And then I told him that I wanted kids within a year. So. <laughs> Like, yeah, that sucks. He, he, I was one of the only people who messaged him that week, and he was worried that he wouldn't get any messages the following week. So he just said, yeah, and now he's your reluctant father. One day he'll come home. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he paid for only one week of Bumble Premium. So yeah, uh, he, he had three days left and he didn't want to take that risk. He yeah. is not a gambling man. So just try to inject joy into your dating because it is fun. And if you're not having fun, examine why. Again, is it expense? Don't go for dinner. Do you not have the energy to listen to another human being? Is that a periodic thing? Or is your life just so draining that you can't deal with that? Because if it's periodic, cool, take a break. Mm -hmm. If it's your life, you probably need to work on that because you're not going to be able to date someone even if you find someone cool if you don't have the energy to see humans. You know what I mean? The other thing I wanted to mention is like, he was like, oh, I, I started dating because I'm lonely. But like dating isn't Oops. the only aspect no. to fill that cup. And that was something that like changed my life. I've talked about it before. It changed my fucking life when I started investing more heavily into my platonic friendships, specifically with other men. It changed my dating life because I no longer needed the validation of, you know, chasing someone until they had sex with me or until they showed me romantic attention or affection. Like I didn't need any of that anymore. So mm -hmm. when I found it and pursued it, it was a far more honest and uh, yeah, because, genuine. Again, it's not the desperation we're talking about. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're not like, well, fuck if, if I say no, I'm lonely for the next week or until the next person on hinge messaged me. I say no. And I go home. And even if the date, like you've had dates cut short where you come home and we're like, Oh, hell yeah. We thought you were out all night, but now come play PlayStation with us. And like made our nights, hopefully took the sting out of your night. You know what I mean? And like, that's yeah. a pretty good alternative to having a shitty long date or staying with someone you're not into. Right. So pursue your friendships, get yourself yeah. good. You know? I mean, I remember specifically there were times where like before I had started investing in my platonic friendships, I would 
uh, the first thing I would do at the beginning of the week or whatever would fill my week up with as many dates and booty calls and whatever as I as I could. You know what I mean? It was just like if I could fill the whole week, great. And then if I had anything free, then I would be like, oh, I'm free on Thursday, I guess. So like, I guess I'll do something with people. And that sucked, right? Like it, it was a shitty way to treat friends. It was a shitty way to treat people who like wanted to do things with me. I was prioritizing sexual encounters and romantic encounters mm-hmm. and dates with strangers because that's what I needed for. That's what I felt like I needed for validation. Mm-hmm. And once yeah. that shift came, once I started being like, okay, the week is coming. I'm going to figure out who's free and who can do what. And I'm going to like finding when I only had one day to go on a date, I was a lot more like selective. Yes. I was a little more intentional and genuine about who I wanted to spend time with. And that was very telling mm-hmm. for me of being like, Oh, all those people that I was, you know, that Sunday night when I was just being like, Hey, 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 Hey. And seeing who responded and who I could line up for the week. It was usually like, Oh, this is the person that I actually want to spend time with. So, Hey, yeah. what are you doing on Wednesday? And that's when you started, I started developing much stronger romantic relationships as well and sexual relationships because I was committing a little bit more seriously to the time that I wanted to spend with people. Mm -hmm. So do that. Do it. Okay. This is from Webosite. If you have a work wife or work husband, you're an awful person who needs to take a step back and reevaluate their own life. If you're in a relationship, Things are tough at home and trying to branch out. Just stop. You're lusting. Water the grass you tend to every day and it will get better. It's not more green on the other side after you get past the point. Most people indulge, get caught, then come crawling back. Work on your home life instead of trying to play games at work. I feel like you've misunderstood the whole concept of a work wife and work husband. I don't know if we've talked really too much about this on the show, but we've definitely talked about it. It's come up so many times. It's such a weird thing Reddit has this like hate boner for, and it makes me laugh at, like all the time. And this just encapsulates it perfectly. It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, like my work wives, one, they like literally couldn't be any less romantic or physical or sexual chemistry or attraction between mm-hmm. the two of us. And the other one is like in a committed long term relationship with a dude that i absolutely adore you know what i mean so like there's absolutely no threat of either of us anyone in this mix of being called a work wife or a work husband like not even the slightest hint of anything yeah. could happen romantic or sexually between us well it's like my work wife was kyle you know what <laughs> i mean like it's such a weird thing people hate and it's like it's a term that means nothing it's just like oh it's my butt at work. It's my person I'm always with or around. It's like the extent of it. It's a term of endearment that I think people get fucking weird about because mm-hmm. of the implications of husband and wife. Like if yes. it was like if we well, if, hey, there's probably someone it, whose hair does say pod wife and is like, wait, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are buds. There are buds. It's a joke. It's a fun little joke that we do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you just if you need to just convert it in your head to work bestie. Yes. Work fam. That's right? like, literally it. That's it. Now, I don't want to be dismissive because I'm sure there are some people out there who have a work mm-hmm. wife or a work husband, For and sure. it is a bit more insidious than we're talking about. But like, we've seen questions where people are like, oh, I found out my husband was sleeping with his therapist. And it's like, that's awful. But does that mean if you have a therapist, you're a piece of shit? Like, yeah. That's an issue with the person involved, not the term. And it's it's so weird, the hate and the vitriol that gets spewed whenever anyone says, like, work wife, work husband on Reddit. And I'm sure these people also exist in real life and do that in their daily. So it's nothing. And if it is, that's a different issue. And them being called a work wife or work husband does not excuse it, obviously. But the term has nothing to do with it. I also don't think, as with anything in a relationship that makes you uncomfortable, I don't think there's any harm if it particularly triggers you for some reason to ask your partner to be like, hey, that term makes me feel weird. Do we, can we come up with another one? There's no harm in that. And it works for literally anything in a relationship. If your mm-hmm. partner does a thing that makes you uncomfortable, even if you know, even if the rational part of your brain is like, I know this means nothing, but it mm-hmm. weirds me out, then just talk to your partner and be like, hey, can we avoid using that term? or 
Can we come up with a term that is fun and I, like we can work together to figure out what mm-hmm. that is? And I think importantly in the conversation, you don't be like accusatory. And you, I think it always helps to be like, I know I'm being irrational or I know I'm being like a little ridiculous because like then if they also feel like you're being a little weird, if you're admitting it, they'll be like, cool, like a nice little bit of like humility and just like self-knowledge and like honesty and vulnerability Mm. go a long way because if you just go change it, it's wrong. There's something wrong with it. It's like you're kind of aggressive and you're putting them in the position of being like, you're being a little weird. And like you're going over the top, which again might spawn more defensiveness and blah, 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 blah. Where if you're just like, look, I know I'm being ridiculous. I feel like people are a lot more willing to meet you on your level, right? And like, I think knowing that about a situation is also going to help you not be ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's when discussing anything, it's so much easier to speak from like where your stance is as opposed to trying to like project it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's way easier to be like, the term work wife makes me feel weird than it is to approach someone and be like, I don't like when you use the term work wife. Like, yes, same thing. It means the exact same thing, but the connotations and the phrasing and the framing of it, it like immediately well, one, like, Oh Jesus. Like it, one's accusatory. One is sort of like, yes. I'm here's a thing that's happening with me. Yes. As opposed one to is being like, like opening up and letting it. them in. The other one is like shooting an arrow at them. You know? Yeah. So, so, I just, mean, it's such an intre- like, it's such an important thing to talk about, like, when you talk about anything, is to, if it's something that's bothering you, frame it through you and not, what, like, at them. Yeah. And be chill. Be chill. Oh, we gotta go so quickly, because I read the third question. Okay, this is Sensitive Koala, 6232, sexually turned on by our age difference, how can I let him know? I'm a 29-year-old female, casually seeing and sleeping with a man, 40-year-old male, a bit older than me. I realize that I have an age gap king. I'm heavily turned on that he's older than me. He's great in bed, more established, and looks so handsome. I feel like a cute young woman who gets to be his student in life and sex. We've never discussed the age difference, but it turns me on so much. How could I tell him that I not only don't mind that he's older, but I actually like it? I don't want to be creepy. I like the power dynamic that I'm kind of naive and innocent, and he's a mentor who I love to please, and that I clearly look younger when we're out on dates. I eventually want to call him daddy in bed, too. But I worry all this will freak him out. We're actually pretty equally professionally and fairly egalitarian outside of the bedroom. And we've never talked about this dynamic. So it sounds like you want to engage in role play. And that's wonderful. And that's a very easy, like, kink slash sexual activity conversation that you can have. Like, if you want to call him daddy, you can have that conversation. If you want to engage in this role play of, like, He's your sexual mentor and you're like, whatever, which I think are like, ter- like they're peripheral to what you're saying as well. But if you want to just like, I think it's maybe a little strange just out of nowhere to be like, I like the age difference. It turns me on because it can seem a little like fetishy, fetishization-y, you know what yes. I mean? Like if you were like, oh, I'm really turned on by my partner being ethnicity and out of nowhere, you were like, I love that you're ethnicity. I'm just saying ethnicity instead of being specific, but it sounds real strange. That's fucking weird. So if you just come out and say that, he might love it, or he might just be like, ah, okay. If he comes out and is like, I'm a little worried about the age gap, that's a wonderful time for you to be like, one, Mm -hmm. don't mind. Two, turns me on a lot. But like a lot of the things, it seems like you almost want to engage in role play. And it's like, if you do that, he'll know that turns you on. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. That's the thing is I agree 100%. I think the second, if it's something that you can't control as in age or, you know, ethnicity, skin color, any of those things, if that person has no control over that aspect of their personality or their identity, then I think you do run the risk of of fetishization. And I think it's very easy to feel sort of diminished. If I was dating someone who was, 25 or something and they were like i love that you're 10 years older than me. i love that you're 11 years older than me mm-hmm. i'd be like well okay that's fine i wouldn't date you if i had a problem with the age gap and also now i'm wondering if that's the reason why you're dating me yeah right? especially like, if this guy is a little like oh like I'm, I'm a bit older and it's like this girl's a little younger and i wonder like how like if he's in his head about it and then you say this thing 
and you're kind of hoping to get him out of his head about it, but you're kind of saying, again, this thing he can't control, so it's like, cool, is that the only thing you like? You know? Because also, she doesn't mention much else she likes about him that's not related to his age. Well, she says he's getting bad, more established, and looks so handsome. I guess, okay. but Right. And the fact that... He, I think Niall's right. I think if you Same want again. to talk about age play, which I don't even know if that's what you're looking for, but if you want him to take a more dominant thing, you can even, like, again, open communication, but, like, things like this, sometimes you need a cheeky way in. You can be fun and just be like, oh, one of my friends said that you had strong daddy energy or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, you can crack the door open without really broaching it. Because if he's like, oh, yeah. I fucking hate that. Great. You know immediately, yeah. right? And if he doesn't immediately seem uh, repulsed by it, you can lean in and just be like, you can be my daddy tonight or something like that and mm-hmm. test the waters, right? Like you can dip your foot in without being like, I love that you're old. You're my daddy, right? Like, yes, <laughs> yes. Like that's not or the way to do like, it. In the middle of fucking just yell it out. Not the way to do it. Yeah. Now I will say every time I've been called daddy, it has been by complete surprise. And it that's the only time I've ever enjoyed it. If someone surprised you and you enjoyed it, did they just never repeat it again? Or the next time they did it, you were like, nope. No, it was. it's more like the first time it would happen with someone, I'd be like, oh, okay, I like that. Because I've had people call me it prior to, and I've been like, I don't like that. But there are certain mm. people who'd say it a certain way in certain situations where I'm like, okay, I do like that now. Daddy? <laughs> no, I do like that. Daddy? <laughs> Daddy, please. Papa? It's just <laughs> Lou Wilson. Papa? <laughs> so it all depends. And like, I think you can test the waters sort of harmlessly. But I would, I don't think you need to bring up the age gap. One, he knows he's older than you. Yes. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's, unless he's an absolute fucking idiot or you've lied about your age, he knows he's older than you. So as Nell said, if you want to play around with sort of the power dynamic of an older man, just introduce that idea. And yeah. please, I've talked about it before. Don't do the schoolgirl thing. If you're going to fucking weird him out, it's going to be with a schoolgirl thing. No, no, no guy who's dating someone younger wants to be like, you want to pretend I'm not legal? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, I don't know. Please, please don't do that. Don't sexualize children. No. All right, you ready? Yeah. Got blast through this one. It's blank. My 33-year-old male girlfriend, 28-year-old female, won't let me order fun drinks at coffee shops because they're gay. <laughs> uh, my girlfriend is an avid Redditor. I've been together with my partner for a year. Long story short, she won't let me order fun drinks when we go to a coffee shop on weekends because she says they make me look gay. When I pressed her on it last time, she sort of backtracked a bit and said she's also worried about the added sugar of drinks, like frappuccinos, mochas, pumpkin spice lattes, etc. Thing is, I only drink regular black coffee during the week and keep a pretty clean diet. I view a mocha frappuccino on the weekend as my reward or cheat meal, and it's nice to switch it up for my go-to. I'm six foot tall, 175 pounds, so weight is not an issue, and I work out a few times per week. My partner has called me gay multiple times when ordering these drinks, and one time we were out with our other girlfriends, they agreed men should only drink plain black coffee. They even said an iced Americano is somewhat feminine because you use a straw. I was disappointed by these women as they are all well-educated, liberal, and claim to be progressive. I find the civil standard a bit troubling to say the least, but they claim that they can't be sexist or homophobic because they are women. I love my girlfriend and wish she would stop saying these things, but I find that hurtful and I'm at odds on how to talk to her or make her come around. Do I keep trying to convince her or move on? I mean, there might be some validity to women not being able to be sexist because of the whole idea of, you know, the oppressor can't be or or the oppressed can't be perpetuators of. But a woman can absolutely be homophobic, right? Just because you're a woman doesn't mean you're not homophobic. And I think certainly calling your straight boyfriend gay because he wants to drink something with whipped cream or a straw. Let's agree. You should never use a straw. No, it doesn't matter what you're drinking. You, if it's a milkshake, no, you fucking you put you your... Just, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you scoop it with your hands like a man. Like you a get man. your little fucking shovel, your milkshake shovel, and you just fucking go to town. But don't you dare put that shovel too far in your mouth. Yeah. That's also bad. Men are just meant to stand in the rain, drinking black coffee. There's no straws, seen, no umbrellas. Have you seen the TikTok account of Is the guy the who's... Yeah, who has the like notepad of like all the things that women have said are the icks. One woman was just like, 
one time this guy got hit by a car. <laughs> it's like, oh, it just switches over. It's like, get hit by a car. Yeah. When your man, fucking Matt Reif, was blowing up before he tanked his career, he, someone like posted a video being like, I loved Matt Reif until I saw him wearing like over the head headphones. <laughs> it's like, it's like instant ick. It's like, oh, fuck. We can't show this video to anybody. Yeah. That's why our lady audience has just fucking plummeted. Yeah. Once we yeah. started doing now videos just, now with just our the boys. Just now the, the boys, boys listen to us talking about sex, and that's so gay. So gay. This is one of our dear friends has a penchant for ordering the most ridiculous drink. I haven't seen him do it in a while now, but mm-hmm. back in the days, back in our single days, no less, back in the days where we would roll through the city of Toronto as a roving pack of boys, mm-hmm. I remember him literally we were at like a barish club thing and he pretty much ordered a root beer float like he ordered like a guinness float or something like that there's no cool way to eat a root beer float however having the balls to eat a root beer float in my opinion is cool as fuck that's the thing it's like and i know when they say gay they mean like effeminate and it's meant to be this derogatory term so one Mm. they are homophobic fuck them two being scared of what people think and oh god i gotta have my black coffee because i don't want people to try to say i'm less of a man that's pretty non-manly to me it's not even like i I don't want to get into manly and not manly but what i mean is like they're espousing this weird image and it's like that goes against the image the very image they're trying to portray drink the what you want there is a a gentleman who comes into my bar quite regularly who holds should we say traditional values Right. And the amount of times, it, like, my New Year's resolution includes terrorizing this man to the point that he never returns. Hell yeah. Uh, just going to be me calling him out on shit, right? Mm-hmm. And the last interaction I had with him was about, don't remember what it was talking about, but, oh, it was my fingernails. I had painted my fingernails. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, kind of, like, hemming and hawing about it. And I was just, like, he's, like, you know, men, you know, men shouldn't do that shit. Men shouldn't do that shit. I was, like, why not? And he's like, well, you know, women paint their nails and stuff. And I was like, yeah, women wear jewelry, too. And you've got, like, five necklaces on. So, like, what's the difference? And he's like, well, these are, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's, like, going on. And I was just like, okay, great. But I was just like, why? So you're making an exception for yourself, if that's the case, blah, blah, blah. But I was just like, would you not say, like, you give off the era of, of a man who doesn't give a fuck what anyone thinks. And that you're going to do your own thing. He's like, yeah, fuck yeah. And I was like, great. Same. So why should I give a fuck about what you think about? And he's like, well, and I was like, because if I have to give a shit what you think, you're going to have to listen to what I think. And like, again, so many necklaces. And he was just <laughs> like, well, uh, <laughs> it's just like, but let's yeah. play this game, man. And it's like, you're right. Like, it's such a stupid thing to be like, I want a man who's tough and who isn't afraid to be who he is. And it's like, blah, 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 blah. But the second like he cannot use a straw or an umbrella or paint his nail. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's your girlfriend sucks. I don't really want to tell you to have a chat with her. I honestly don't know if you're going to get anywhere because she sucks and her friends suck. Yeah. So it's like she's in an echo chamber of shitness. And it's like, I don't know. Fucking dump her, man. Yeah. I I would drink. This sounds so like because it's not just frappuccinos. It's going to be everything. Yeah. Imagine being on a vacation being like, you know what? I want to fucking crush. I want to crush a fucking drink out of a coconut with an umbrella. Oh, an umbrella. A yeah. drink umbrella? That's even worse than a human umbrella. I know. But like, right? like literally, it, I've had people come into my work and like order a cocktail, and then when it comes, he's like, oh, man. And he's looking at me like I fucking like went, set out to victimize me. Like, why didn't you tell me you came in this glass, man? Like, come on, really? Yeah. I'm like, oh, sorry. I didn't realize we had gendered glassware. Like, fuck yourself, dude. You're upset because you got a sangria and it wasn't masculine? Like, get the fuck out. The, yeah, I'll the- bring in the fucking horn the next time a flaming like <laughs> embossed horn and i'll fucking like shut like, yeah i'll find a old rusty bucket to bring to you yeah. sir <laughs> yeah, your fucking sangria like and the best is that we just kept because we put like flower we put like edible flower petals in our sangrias and shit and then the next drink he got which he thought would be more manly we put like a whole ass flower in, and he was like slowly losing it and you could just see his date wanted to die the like societal pressure and this is how bad it is for men. You know what I mean? Like this is how fucked up the patriarchy is and misogyny is for us is there are so many men who have full on panic attacks based on the glassware of their drink. 
<laughs> and it's it's not a rare thing. Like Niall is not explaining a one singular like oh the no. amount of times I get like things being like I want a Stella, but it's got to be in a Guinness glass because a Stella glass is curved. Yeah, it's almost it's almost like a wine glass, kind of, but not really. What? Yeah, yeah. I want a or glass like, of wine. Can you put it in a rocks glass for me? Like, are you really scared of, of a curved glass, my dude? Yeah, and dude. it's so much. I've been bartending for so long, and it is not a isolated oh, instance. It is. No. It's almost the exception when you have someone come in and get, you know, a quote unquote girly drink and is cool with it. And again, drinks are just drinks, man. Just get whatever the fuck drink you want. Yeah. Get leave your fun behind. fucking coffee order. Stop being so fucking shitty about these things. That's going to do it for this episode, friends. We're going to hop onto online dating platforms very quickly and yeah, review quickly. a couple profiles. Now you're going to rapid fire them at me. Okay, this is, I'm so sorry, but this, I had to read it, I guess. They have no name. That's probably for the best. He is 39, and his profile only says, she said she was 18. Oh, come on. Why? What did you? Why? What do you like, who do, who? Are you, like, why? Why? What, what are you what, doing? What the what fuck net is are wrong you? With you? What net are you casting, dude? Like, who, what? Like, do, do you want the cops? <laughs> you did it you've got the best dating profile for the police uh that's yeah. gonna be you, a just a minus what? but the number just keeps going down so i can't say you know when you try to like say the exact time it's that except the number just keeps going down yes i'm kinky af so you'll be in for a nice treat prefer someone who's active ambitious has goals and good communication skills it's nothing like yes You've listed the things that most people like. It's great that you've kind of introduced the kinky idea into the world. Although, with my experience on dating platforms, nine times out of ten, when someone says they're kinky, they don't follow like any of the rules of kink, and yeah. they're just going to do whatever the fuck they want without consent or prior conversation. I just love that. Like one kinky kind of means nothing, right? Because like you could be kinky and be into like feet and be like kinky and be like I'm going to shit in your mouth. But secondly, it's like, I'm kinky, so you'll be in for a nice treat. Like, <laughs> okay, cool. Like, ooh, a nice treat. Like, what the fuck is that? I love it. I'm giving it, it a four because it's... Yes. There's nothing in there that is particularly useful. Yeah. I'll also give it a four. This is Vestine. I go crazy four is the prompt. I love gifts, especially when they meet you on the first date and bring you a gift. It's super cute, like face with the hearts. Love hygiene. Love a handsome man and wine and dine me or leave me alone. You must bring a gift on the first date. <laughs> it's not a gift anymore. It's a tribute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like, was like, oh, I love gifts. I'm like, okay, I don't love it that she's already kind of like wink, wink. But then she's like, you know what? I wasn't clear enough. You have to. Yeah. I would, <laughs> I would bring like a live spider. That would be my gift to you. Hey, you know what? If you got me a cool spider, I'd be down like those jumping spiders. Fuck. I think it was Geist, the podcast, when we were celebrating after the Canadian Podcast Awards, they sent me pictures of their jumping spiders who were celebrating and they're very cute. And I don't <laughs> know if like done... they, they just snuck a fucking spider to you. Yeah. I don't know if we've done this one, but actually I can't read this one, which is terrible. This year, I really want to, is the prompt, find my wife so she can stop getting piped by other guys. <laughs> for, a, for a second, I realized that, like, you want to find the woman who will eventually be your wife and not the woman you've <laughs> already married that you've lost. Hey, maybe not. Maybe she's maybe. just been gone. It's like, damn it. She's <laughs> lost and she's so horny. It's so, I know. so disloyal. I don't know how to help with this one. I don't know. I love my aimless, disloyal wife. Yeah, I'm going to give it a zero because it's, it's a definitely bad. bad. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's going to do it for this episode, friends. Thank you very much for listening. Once again, we have a big anniversary show, February the 8th. We're doing it with our pals, Olivia and Maddie from, uh, why did I call her Olivia? That was I know, weird. it was weird. I didn't like that. It's, it's your new, it's program Dane likes to, <laughs> yeah. you know. Olivia and Madeline. They're going to pull out the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. From 30 Going On 13, they're a blast. If you haven't listened to their show, please go check yeah. them out. And then 
experience both of us on stage together February 8th. Mm -hmm. You can get tickets on our website or any social media platform. Once again, tickets are $10, starts at 7 o'clock, or you can get the VIP treatment for $15 and you get a glass of rosé bubbly on your way in. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Tickets will probably go quick and 30 going on 13 are doing their Emma Stone month right now. So what better time than to hop over there? Okay, I got some bad sex writing. This is from a like a restaurant industry page on Facebook that I'm in, and someone posted this, and it's just pretty weird. So the original question is, hey, might be a strange question, but what is everyone scrubbing their hands with after work? I used to use this brand, but it doesn't seem to be doing the trick anymore. My wife keeps telling me to wear gloves, but I don't love wearing gloves. Let me know. So this man replies, my wife has grown fond of the way my hands smell. The boys used to call me Pickle Fingers back when I was flipping burgers in high school. Now I'm Pico de Gallo Fingers. Can't help you with any hand cleaning techniques. In fact, I don't know why I'm here. I can only say kitchen fingers are the best fingers in the world. And I attribute dill pickles for my success in the dating world. Again, I don't know why I'm here or even what I'm trying to say. Fingers rule. <laughs> There's no way that no way he's that high as fuck. Sir, what are you doing? I think look, if there's one thing, one energy I'm gonna go into with twenty twenty four, it's my new found love, fingers. How much they rule. Fingers fucking rule, guys. They rule. My name is Dane Miller. And I'm Mal Finger. And we've been your finger buddies. (laughs) 